moving forward, let's take a look though at this uh, this this preseason roster overall, right? My favorite part of the preseason where we get to see a ton of names, right, and have to guess who's gonna, uh, you know, <laughs> still, you know, be, be be part of the the team moving forward. Obviously, these rosters get, uh, you know, waved down a little bit uh, as as March first comes around, and then. Um, Challenge Cup looms closer, but in terms of their preseason, maybe a little bit shorter than preseasons past. 24 players listed out for the Portland Thorns. Star of the goalkeepers with Bella Bixby, Shelby Hogan, and Abby Smith. Defenders at seven, uh, Kelly Hubley, Megan Klingenberg, uh, Natalia Quica, Emily Menges, uh, Megan Nolly, Madison Pogarch, and Becky Sarron. For the midfielders, they have eight, Sam Coffey, uh, they have Crystal Dunn listed, Olivia Moultrie, Gabby Provenzano, Rocky Rodriguez, Yasmin Ryan, Hina Sagita. And then for the forwards, it's going to be six with Natalie Beckman, Hannah Belfort, Marissa Everett, Christine Sinclair, Sophia Smith, and Morgan Weaver. It's very important to note that when Portland Thorns put out their preseason roster for 2022, uh, eight midfielders listed, two of them not available for the 2022 yeah. season. One being Crystal Dunn. She is pregnant and expected uh, to give birth to her first child. Congratulations, Crystal and her f- uh, family growing and also Angela Salem who has retired. So yeah. <laughs> their eight midfielders actually drops down to six immediately, which takes their 24 player list to 22, which is tiny, right? Like 22 players on your preseason roster. Isn't that many because most teams, they start with a higher number um, that way they can offer contract extensions or contract signings to some of their newer, younger players that come into preseason um after preseason after they get a few days under their belt so portland they don't have that much wiggle room with how they can expand and grow this roster at this point uh, of preseason um so definitely super interesting to look at i i know that six forwards that doesn't seem like a lot to me even six midfielders that doesn't seem like a lot to me um we'll see though because Things will shake out. Things will change around as they always do. Players go on loan and and situations like that change. But I I do love it, Sandra. I love looking at the preseason roster. Yeah, you know, it's with the 22 going from 24 to 22 players, Mm -hmm. right? When we sort of uh, center on the fact that that Dunn is expecting and then Salem retires. We look ahead maybe to like a a projected starting 11, right? Which is something that we've been doing on our of previews and it's like let it's like le- a smaller number to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like select um, a starting uh, eleven. But I think even with some of the changes to personnel that the Portland Thorns went through in their off season, there's a n- a number of players on the preseason roster that you can point at and say this is someone who's probably going to lace them up. Come opening day right and i think most of that you could see within maybe the defending core right mm-hmm. i'm looking at somebody like you know a becky star somebody like a mangas a klingenberg you know older more veteran players who have been part of the club part of the team remain healthy they're going to be there on day one for me but i also am looking at somebody like a kelly hubley right somebody who really had a a really sort of a a good kind of uh maybe breakout year perhaps for some for some folks uh back in 2021 and then obviously we're going to be keeping an eye on that midfield core uh to sort of see what the midfield's going to look like but i don't think you go out and you sign a player you know japanese international in in, in sugita and, and not intend to use her right so I'm, my <laughs> assumption is gonna be, yeah my assumption is going to be that we'll likely see her within the midfield as well and then i don't think you have somebody like a sophia smith right somebody you drafted so early so young uh, going pro out of college, having the season that she put together right in 2021. Um, and probably going to expect to see someone like her uh, in that starting 11 as well. But in terms of maybe breaking down segments within this preseason roster, when we're looking at a player who can be the young prospect to watch, right? When we're looking at a player uh, who can uh, is going to be the, the essential experienced player that this club might be leaning on, or even a player who we're looking at to make that next step. When it comes to any of those categories, particularly for young prospect, Lisa, who do you think we should be keeping an eye on here? 
I, I don't want this to seem like an obvious answer for Portland's young prospect, but Olivia Moultrie, she is the young prospect that I think everyone needs to be keeping an eye on. Um, but she's 16 years old. Everyone had her eye on her last year in the 2021 season as a 15 year old in the league, signing a professional contract. That was huge. It made headlines everywhere. Um, and she had a lot of pressure on her. She did play. She got some minutes. She got uh, some game time under her belt last year. But it was really just like pomp and circumstance for her. This year, I think that Olivia Moultrie can grow and really take that next step as a young prospect and a young player for Portland, especially when you're looking at the midfield unit for Portland, where they do have some of those holes. If she can be a player that steps up, it could be fantastic. She was recently called up to the United States women's U20 national team uh, for a training camp and, and con looking ahead to CONCACAF U20 women's championship that is happening in, in the Dominican Republic. She's a player that is getting internationally recognized at the United States level. Uh, she's been recognized at the professional level already, but can she grow? And I think because she is so young, her ceiling is so much higher than any other young prospect in this league. Because even when you look at the other college draft picks that Portland has signed in Sam Coffey, um, uh, uh, who else did they sign? Uh, Hannah Belfort. They have college experience that Moultrie doesn't have, but Moultrie already has a year of professional experience under her belt. So keep an eye on Moultrie. See if she gets some starts, right? I think yeah. she could work her way into that starting lineup in the midfield, be a goal-scoring threat, be a, a big player that's circled on scouting reports for opponents, and be a game-changer and a difference-maker for Portland in this new era and this page that they're turning, especially in their midfield unit. Um, I think we could see a different style, too, that Moultrie could bring to the game just with her youth yeah. and – energy that she has. So she's my young prospect for sure. When, when you look at some of the experienced players that you're hoping to, to kind of step up and, and lead this team, who are you circling on your roster? Yeah. I think when we, when we talked earlier about that, that midfield, we are looking at that area is probably being the area for Portland where there's a lot of opportunity there. So I'm with you hundred percent on Olivia Moultrie in that there's a real opportunity for this, this player to maybe make some noise in 2022 and try to maybe seal a spot in that starting 11. But because of this sort of transition that this team is going to be making, I think this is also going to be another season where the club does rely a bit on their more experienced players. So I'm going to be, there's a number of players on this roster that you could point to and say, this is going to be one of those players, but I think it's going to be maybe a defensive duo that they're going to be looking at and trying to rely on in somebody like a Megan Klingenberg alongside maybe somebody in the center back uh, with, with Emily Menges, right? Particularly with Klingenberg, Another one of these players, I think that for some reason or other, almost fell under the radar in terms of her level of play in 2021. This was someone who was, yes, got the start at outside back, but someone that we saw operating and running within the midfield or playing higher up in the pitch at moments when necessary for Portland Thorns. So doing a lot for the club, yes, on the pitch, but also clearly doing a lot for the club in the locker room for the team in the mm -hmm. locker room and off the pitch as well. She's always been somebody who's been able to be uh, very vocal, you know, in terms of speaking with and for um, behalf of, uh, of the locker room. And then even with somebody like a Mangus who is bringing, yes, all of that experience in the center back role on the pitch, but coming off of an off season where she was one of these players who was, integral right to sort of forming and, and ratifying this new cba uh we saw somebody like Mangas really not just leaning on the pitch but off of it as well for this club so these are two players that i think we're both going to be looking at in terms of those experienced essential players that this club is going to be leaning on in 2022 but there's also players within this roster that we saw during 2021 that really took it to the next level because it was an Olympic year in which the depth of certain clubs benches had the opportunity to sort of show off. And one of those players that we found ourselves talking about a little bit was Kelly Hubley, 
Lisa. And I think you and I both agree that she is the player that we want to see be a sort of next step, next level player for Portland Thorns in 2022. She is. Kelly Hubley is a, a player that hasn't had the spotlight. I mean, she's a de- she's a defender for Portland and she has seen minutes and seen game time, but it's often when a starting defender is out of the picture. She's their first one that they call in. So whether it was during the 2020 Tokyo Olympics that uh, a number of backs were gone for Portland in Tokyo for the Olympics, Kelly Hubley stepped in, whether it's injuries that happen, whether it's international breaks that are happening. Kelly Hubley is the go-to gal for the defensive role to kind of slide in and do that. I want to see Kelly Hubley this year take the fate of her career into her own hands and make it so difficult that Portland coaches cannot take her off the pitch because she's doing so well that no matter who comes back from international break, who recovers from their injury and and who can return to play. I want Kelly Hubley to make it so difficult for them to take her off the field because she did that last year. We saw moments of it, moments of greatness from Kelly Hubley as a defender to be able to slide into a center back role and be a leader, be an organizational vocal voice to keep the team in line and do really good job defensively to not only make big stops, but then transition the play into offense, breaking lines, finding forwards feet. So I want her to continue to be that player, but make it more consistent, be a day in day out player that really challenges the starting position in the back line. Because when we look at the 22 player roster and who are going to be the starters, we talked about the back line and the defenders being a lot of those solid players in, in Mangus and Becky Sauerbronn and uh, Klingenberg and Quika. But can Kelly Hubley break, break into that line? She's someone that I'm really going to be keeping an eye on to see how consistent her play is, uh, consistently intense and consistently aggressive and consistently defensive lock for Portland on defense. Uh, I love it. Uh, I love to see uh, DePaul Blue Demon thrive in NWSL. So I'm absolutely here to see the continued ooh, ooh, rise. East. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm here to see the continued rise of uh, Chicagoland defenders in the league.